All right. Good evening, everyone. Could you please confirm? Is my voice and my video clear for everyone? All of you, could you please confirm? Is my voice and video clear for everyone? Very good. So guys, I welcome all of you to Ashok IT. My name is Ashok. So today we are here to discuss about the master program on DevOps with AWS Cloud. Today is our first session related to DevOps with AWS Cloud. All right, so let's get started. Before going to start our course, first let me introduce about myself. My name is Ashok. I'm having total 11 plus years of experience in IT industry. So my current role is technical lead. I'm working for one banking sector company from Hyderabad location. So this is very quick introduction about myself and I will be the trainer for this complete course. All right. So before going to enter into the course, first let's understand who are eligible to attend this class and what are the prerequisites for attending this DevOps with AWS. So the first one, there are no specific prerequisites in order to attend this DevOps with AWS training because it is zero to hero course. We are going to start from very basic level. Okay. So any graduate who are interested to become DevOps engineer, any person who is interested to quick start their career as a DevOps engineer with AWS cloud platform, those people are eligible to attend this DevOps with AWS Cloud. So it is zero to hero course. And in order to attend this DevOps with AWS Cloud, programming knowledge is not mandatory. If you already have some programming background, that is added advantage for you. And if you don't have the programming knowledge also, it's not a problem because in the DevOps, programming will not be available. Only scripting will be available in the DevOps. Whatever the scripting that is required for the DevOps engineer, that is, we are going to cover as part of our syllabus. So if you don't have any programming background like Java, Python, .NET, that's not an important thing. So programming is not required for the DevOps engineer. Remember, scripting is required. That scripting we are going to learn as part of our course. Right. Sir, uh, I'm from some MBA background, MCA background, BTEC degree. So can I attend this course? So any graduate, even undergraduates also can learn this DevOps. DevOps is one of the trending topic in the IT industry nowadays. Graduates, undergraduates, backend developers, web developers, non-IT people also can attend this master program on DevOps with AWS Cloud. So just read these points. What are the prerequisites for attending this DevOps with AWS Cloud? There are no specific prerequisites. No need to have programming background. No need to from only IT background. Anybody who is really interested to become a DevOps engineer, they can attend this program. The only prerequisite for this program is your time and dedication. Next to three to four months of time, you need to be very dedicated to watch the classes. So that is the only thing that is required to learn this course and to become a DevOps engineer. Are you guys clear? Are you guys clear? Able to understand what are the prerequisites for this program? Good. So please respond in the chat box when I ask some question. So the session should be interactive, guys. You can see my video. And when I ask some question, please type your answer in the chat box. So do we have any prerequisites to attend this course? No, the only prerequisite to attend this training, your time and your dedication and one good laptop for the practice. Those are the prerequisites. Next one, coming to our course content. Okay, what we are going to learn as part of this course. What is our course outline? What is the roadmap of this DevOps with AWS course? So the first thing, we have divided this course into multiple modules, guys. 
DevOps with AWS training, we have divided into multiple modules. The first module that is introduction to DevOps world. For non-IT people, this is very, very, very important. Okay. So as part of this module, we are going to understand what is software development life cycle. First of all, what is your software project? How the software project development will happen in the IT companies? What life cycle they are going to follow? I mean to say, what procedure they are going to follow in order to develop a project? What is waterfall model? What are the drawbacks with the waterfall model? What is agile model? Why the agile model is trending in the market that we are going to learn as part of this first module? Software introduction, software company structure, interview process, salary structure, development life cycle, project architecture. What is the role of DevOps engineer in the company? So what are the day-to-day -day activities of the DevOps engineer in the software company? All those things we are going to learn as part of our first module. The first module is theoretical module only because we are going to learn about the project, project architecture, roles and responsibilities as a DevOps engineer. Then the second module, we are going to learn Linux. If you want to work as a DevOps engineer, Working with the Linux operating system is very, very important. So tomorrow in the company, you will be working with the Linux machines only as a DevOps engineer. So Linux is required to learn the DevOps course. Here, Linux is also included in our course. So Linux is not a prerequisite, guys. Linux is part of the syllabus. So we are going to learn Linux operating system. What is Linux operating system? Why companies are preferring Linux operating system than Windows operating system? What are the differences between Windows machines and Linux machines? How to set up a Linux machine? How to work with Linux commands? Okay. How to work with the package managers in the Linux? How to install the software in the Linux? How to deploy applications in the Linux machine? Okay. How to deal with the networking related operations in the Linux? File permissions user permissions, users creation, groups creation, okay? And how to work with cron jobs in the Linux, how to configure schedulers in the Linux. Everything we are going to learn as part of this Linux operating system. And one more important thing, in the Linux, we are going to learn shell scripting also. As I told you, scripting knowledge is required for the DevOps engineer. The scripting that is required for the DevOps engineer, we are going to cover as part of this module too. So it is Linux operating system with the shell scripting. So we are going to learn shell scripting also as part of this one. We are going to learn shell scripting as part of this one. Good. Fine guys. So you understand what is the first module and what is the second module. Module one, introduction to the DevOps world. Module two, that is Linux operating system, along with the shell scripting. Good. Then once the Linux and shell scripting got completed, then we are going to work with AWS cloud. So working with the cloud platforms is very, very important nowadays because every company is migrating to cloud infrastructure. So to become a DevOps engineer, you should have knowledge on one, at least one cloud platform. Okay. So if you have the opportunity, then you can learn multi-cloud also like AWS, Azure, GCP, but at least one cloud platform knowledge is mandatory for the DevOps engineer. So as part of this training, we are going to cover AWS cloud. What is AWS? Why we need to go for AWS? What are the services available in the AWS? How to set up the infrastructure in the AWS cloud that we are going to learn? Some services are there in the AWS. Okay, so we are going to learn around 10 to 15 services from AWS. Okay, good. Once the AWS cloud topics are completed, then we will enter into actual DevOps, right? So to learn the DevOps, Linux plus scripting is required and AWS knowledge is required. So that's why I'm going to cover Linux and AWS first. Once it is done, then we are going to start with our DevOps tools. Okay. So DevOps, nothing but the collection of tools, guys, which are used to simplify the application build and deployment process. Okay. So as part of this DevOps tools, we are going to learn Maven, 
GitHub, SonarCube, Nexus, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, ELK, Jira. So there are several tools available. 10 to 12 DevOps tools are available, which are trending in the market. We are going to learn all those DevOps tools practically, and we are going to implement some projects by using those DevOps tools. Okay, so several DevOps tools we are going to understand and we are going to implement them practically as part of our training. Once the tools got completed, then we are going to work with several projects. Okay, so learning the concept with a small example and integrating all the tools and developing the projects is very important in order to attend the interview. Okay, so, so here as module five, we are going to cover some real time projects as a DevOps engineer how we are going to set up the projects in the real time environment. Okay, so how to integrate all the tools, that part, how to deploy the projects in the cloud by using the DevOps tools with AWS services, we are going to implement some projects. Once this project discussion is completed, then the last module will be our interview guide. Interview guide in the sense, how to prepare our resume as a DevOps engineer, how to explain about ourselves in the interview, how to explain roles and responsibilities in the interview, how to mention the projects in the resume, how to prepare our resume, how to apply for the jobs as a DevOps engineer. Okay. And frequently asked questions that I'm going to share and I'm going to conduct some mock interviews for the people on the DevOps with AWS. So that kind of interview guidance will be available and I will be explaining self-introduction of DevOps engineer in the interview, roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineer, how to explain the project in the interview, what kind of questions they are going to ask in the interview for the DevOps engineer with the AWS cloud. Some mock interviews we are going to conduct for you people over the weekends, and you are going to get ready to face the real interviews once this course is done. So this is the complete roadmap of our DevOps with AWS cloud. So from zero to hero level, we are going to learn as part of this training. So that's why we are calling it as master program on DevOps with AWS cloud. Are you guys clear with the course outline? What we are going to learn as part of this training? Are you guys clear with the course outline? What we are going to learn as part of this training? Okay. So what is the duration? What is the fee structure and daily class timings? I will explain everything. I'm not done. Okay. So we just started. So as of now, we understood what is our course is all about and what are the prerequisites to attend this course and what is our course content? What is the roadmap of our course? I will, I will discuss all the information today about the course duration, fee structure, timings, jury, everything. And at the end of the session, at the end of the session, you guys can interact with me directly if you have any questions. For further questions, we can discuss at the end of the session, okay? So if I give unmute option now, if everybody asking the questions in the middle, we cannot explain what we have planned for today. So it will be like a disturbance in the middle. So that's the reason every day, at the end of the session, last 15 minutes, we are going to spend for doubts clarification. Now also, if you have any questions, you can just type in the chat box so that you will not forget. So at the end of the session, you can ask the same question and I will give you answer for interaction. Got it? Perfect. Good. I hope you are clear with the course outline. Then what we are going to learn as part of each module. So we discussed that there are six modules available in our course, right? What is DevOps? First module, the introduction to the DevOps world. What we are going to learn, what is DevOps? Why DevOps? What is the DevOps life cycle? What is software development life cycle? How waterfall methodology will work for the project implementation? What are the drawbacks with the waterfall model? And what is agile methodology? Agile terminology, what is a sprint, what is a scrum, that the scrum framework we are going to understand as part of this module one. As I told you, the first module is just introduction to the DevOps world. This is a theoretical module. What is DevOps? Why DevOps? DevOps life cycle, okay? What is DevOps? Why DevOps? And DevOps life cycle that we are going to understand. 
software development life cycle also we are going to learn as part of this one okay waterfall model and agile model also we are going to learn as part of this first module are you clear and this is theoretical module only guys this is theoretical module just the concept we are going to learn as part of the first module if you are clear with what we are going to learn in the first module could you please type in the chat box yes i'm clear i need your response then only i will get more interest to take the sessions guys i want session to be interactive it's not like i'm teaching you or listening you need to be active in the session all of you clear with the first module that we are going to learn it is a theoretical module and very strong solid basics that we are going to learn as part of this first module guys good then coming to the second module in the second module as discussed we are going to learn linux operating system so every day we are using our computers and laptops with windows operating system windows operating system is recommended for personal use guys but in the real time for the projects for the servers the windows machines are not recommended in the real time for the projects and servers we are going to use linux operating system so linux knowledge is very 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 important for the devops engineers so that's the reason in the second module we are going to learn what is operating system okay and what is the difference between windows operating system and linux operating system and how to work with the linux suppose you already have your computer with the windows machine then how to set up the linux machine in order to practice our linux commands right how to work with linux machines how to work with linux commands and once we understood linux commands then we are going to learn some scripting scripting is also very 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 important for the devops engineers in the interview they will ask some questions related to scripting in the projects also we are going to write some shell scripts to automate the routine tasks that we are doing manually so any work that we are doing manually in the project can be automated by using this scripting okay so the people who are having programming background for them this scripting is very 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 easy here the people who are from non it background they need to spend some extra time they need to keep some extra effort in order to understand this is shell scripting okay it's not programming guys programming is different scripting is different programming knowledge is not required for the devops engineer as i told you scripting knowledge is required for the devops engineers how much scripting that is required we are going to learn as part of our second module okay so non it people may feel little confusion and little difficulty as part of this scripting but you need to spend some extra time you will be getting the daily class notes you will be getting the backup videos also for revision if you are not able to understand in the single session you can re listen the same session from the backup video we are going to share for the revision purpose got it good so i hope you understood what we are going to learn as part of our module 2 is this clear for everyone type in the chat box if you are clear only 3 4 people are responding out of 215 it's bad guys remaining people are not responding i want your response so that i will get more energy to deliver good content if you are keeping silent i will feel that you guys are not interested okay good so this is clear that what we are going to learn in the second module then coming to third module okay so as part of our road map the third module is related to aws cloud guys so nowadays cloud everywhere cloud platforms are available in every project cloud platforms are available earlier people used it to purchase the infrastructure they use it to manage the infrastructure but nowadays companies are not interested to take that burden related to infrastructure companies are preferring the cloud platforms so there are several cloud platforms available in the market like aws cloud azure cloud gcp cloud is available so here we are going to learn what is cloud computing okay 
what are the benefits of using this cloud computing in our project? What is cloud service models available? Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, the cloud models we are going to learn. Then we will see what is AWS, how this AWS came into market with the business model, how they are running their business globally. We are going to learn that. Then we are going to see how to create one free account in the AWS cloud. And we will see what are the services available in the AWS cloud. Okay. So this is introduction part for AWS cloud. What is AWS cloud? What are the benefits with the AWS cloud? What are the services available in the AWS cloud? There are 200 plus services available in the AWS cloud, but all those services will not be used in the single project. So as part of the AWS cloud, we are going to learn some services which are required for the DevOps engineer. So I have mentioned the service names here. These services we are going to learn in the AWS. What are the regions and availability zones in the AWS cloud? What is AMI in the AWS cloud? Okay. How to create virtual machines in the AWS by using EC2? How to work with Elastic Block Store? What is load balancer? What is auto scaling? What is S3 bucket? S3 bucket is used for unlimited storage. What is Route 53? Route 53 is a domain naming service, which is used to map our application to the domain name. What is LightSail? What is RDS? RDS is used to set up relational databases. For example, for every project, database will be available. It can be a Oracle database or MySQL or Postgres SQL. Such kind of relational databases we can set up in the AWS cloud by using RDS service, what is the DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database, VPC available, which is used for creating private network in the cloud. VPC stands for virtual private cloud. It is used to isolate our cloud resources from other AWS account. Okay, so these are the things that we are going to learn as part of our AWS, AWS services. So guys, are you able to understand what services that we are going to learn in the AWS now? Is my voice audible for everyone? Guys, could you please confirm? Is my voice audible for everyone? Yes. So you are able to understand what services that we are going to learn in the AWS. Mainly we are going to learn EC2 service, which is used for creating virtual machines in the AWS cloud. We are going to learn elastic block storage, which is used for block level storage for our virtual machines in the AWS. We are going to learn the load balancers to distribute the application load to multiple servers. We are going to learn auto scaling for a high availability of our application. We are going to learn S3 bucket for unlimited storage. We will learn Route 53 service for a domain mapping, RDS service to set up the relational databases in the AWS cloud. DynamoDB for the NoSQL database, VPC for the virtual private cloud, and CloudWatch. CloudWatch is basically used to monitor the resources in the AWS cloud. Cloud formation is available, and the small services like SES, SQS, SNS services will be available. And how to monitor the billing in the AWS cloud? AWS will provide the infrastructure. AWS cloud will provide the infrastructure on pay as you go model. So how much bill we are going to get in the AWS cloud, how to optimize the bill in the AWS cloud, how to monitor that bill in the AWS cloud, that billing overview also we are going to learn. So this is the agenda as part of our AWS cloud. This is third module syllabus in our course. First module is introduction to the DevOps world. Second module is Linux with the shell scripting. Third module is AWS cloud. Are you clear? Type in the chat box. You got the clarity what we are going to learn. And one more thing is IAM service I have not mentioned here, guys. So we'll mention IAM service, which is identity and access management service in the AWS cloud. That is also we are going to learn as part of this. Okay. So, sir, what is this VPC? What is this EC2? What is this S3? Today, you are not going to learn about that. So today is just a trailer. What is our course? What is the roadmap? What is the syllabus? What are the prerequisites? So picture baki hai. So movie releasing from tomorrow. 
So today is just our trailer overview of the course. You got my point? Okay. Next one, coming to the next module that is DevOps tools, right? So as part of the DevOps tools, what we are going to learn. So we are going to learn about Maven, GitHub, Jenkins, Sonar, Nexus, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, Tomcat, and EFK tools will be available for monitoring the logs of our application. So as part of the DevOps tools, we are going to learn the overview of the DevOps tools, how we are going to work with these DevOps tools, how to set up these DevOps tools on our own, how to install these tools, how to work with Maven. Maven is used to automate the build process for our applications. GitHub is used as a source code repository server to integrate all the developers code at one place. Jenkins is used as a CI CD server to automate the project build and deployment process. Sonar Cube is a code quality checking software. When the developers provide the code in the GitHub, as a DevOps engineer, we need to perform that code review. We need to check the code quality. So whether that code is eligible for Hey guys, am I audible now? Could you please confirm? Am I audible now? Please respond in the chat box. Right. So what are the DevOps tools that we are going to learn as part of this course? We are going to learn Maven, GitHub, Sonar, Tomcat, Nexus, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes. Docker is used for containerization, guys. So if you want to execute your application in any platform, then we are going to use Docker as a containerization software. Once the Docker images are available for our application, in order to manage those containers, in order to scale up, scale down the containers, we are going to use a Kubernetes platform Kubernetes is called as orchestration software. Docker is a containerization software. Kubernetes is an orchestration platform. What is that Docker and Kubernetes? Separately, we are going to lend those topics. Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins, only these three tools will take one month of time. So Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins are very, very important tools for the DevOps engineer. Only for those three tools, we are going to spend one month of time. Okay. Ansible. Ansible is a configuration management software. Ansible is a configuration management software. And Terraform is Terraform is an infrastructure as a core software. So in the AWS cloud, we can create the infrastructure manually. Like I want to create one database in the AWS cloud. I want to create one virtual machine in the AWS cloud. Instead of we are creating the infrastructure in the cloud platform manually, we are going to automate that infrastructure creation by using Terraform. Okay, So Terraform is called as infrastructure as a core software. Nowadays, Terraform is very, very, very important for the cloud engineers. So in the real time, nobody will create the infrastructure manually. We will use the Terraform to automate the infrastructure creation. And the main advantage with the Terraform, by using Terraform, we can create the infrastructure in any cloud platform, not only for AWS guys, Terraform we can use for Azure as well as for GCP also. Next to Tomcat, Tomcat is a web server which is used to run our web applications. And then Nexus is available. Nexus is an artifactory server which is used to store the project build artifacts. It is also part of the syllabus. And ELK stack is available, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. These are used for monitoring the logs of our application. Log monitoring we are going to do by using Elasticsearch and Kibana. 
And one more thing here. In this, I have not mentioned the points. We are going to learn about Grafana and Prometheus also, which are used for servers monitoring. So in order to monitor our applications, we are going to use Grafana and Prometheus concept. Those tools also we are going to cover as part of our DevOps. Learning the DevOps, nothing but learning these DevOps tools to simplify the project build and deployment process. So guys, clear with the tools that we are going to learn as part of our DevOps, Maven, GitHub, Tomcat, Nexus, Sonar, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, ELK. Then we are going to learn about Grafana and Prometheus, which are used for monitoring purpose. Good. Respond in the chat box if you are clear with this one. I want your response, guys. Very few people are responding. Next one, once the DevOps tools are completed, then as discussed, we are going to work on the projects. So we are going to see how to work with the Terraform to automate the infrastructure required for the project. Okay, so we are going to develop a project by using Terraform. What is Terraform? Terraform is used for infrastructure creation. So what for a, we will take one project, whatever the infrastructure that is required for the project, we are going to create by using Terraform. One project we are going to do with the Terraform. One project we will do with the Ansible. Terraform is used to create the infrastructure in the cloud, like creating virtual machines, creating S3 buckets, creating databases, creating AIM users. All infrastructure creation can be automated by using Terraform. The next one, we are going to set up one project with the Ansible. The Ansible is a configuration management software. For example, if there are 10 machines available, in the 10 machines, I want to do some patch update. Going to each and every machine and doing the patching updates, very difficult and time-taking process. So and similarly, suppose for example, there are 20 machines available in the project. In all the 20 machines, I want to install Python. So going to each and every machine, connecting to each and every machine, installing the Python manually and verify that Python is installed or not is time taking process. So such kind of configurations like installing the softwares in multiple computers at a time, copying the files from one computer to another computer, from one server to another server, that kind of configuration management can be automated by using Ansible. For the configuration management, earlier people used Chef and Puppet softwares now. The Chef and Puppet softwares got outdated in the market Currently, people are using Ansible for the configuration management. So we are going to learn the Ansible as part of the DevOps tools, and we will do one project by using this Ansible, okay? which is used for configuration management. Next one, we are going to set up one project by using Jenkins and Docker. Jenkins is used for CI-CD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. By using Jenkins, we will create the CI-CD pipelines to automate the project build and deployment process. Okay, So Jenkins can automate the things that are required for our project, right? Whatever the build process that we need to do, whatever the deployment process that we need to do can be automated by using Jenkins. And as discussed, Docker is a configuration, sorry, Docker is a containerization software, which will package our application and will execute our application as a container. One project we are going to do with the Jenkins and Docker and one project we will do by using Jenkins, Docker, and Kubernetes. So Docker is for containerization. Kubernetes is for the orchestration platform. And once these four projects completed, then one project we will do only with the monitoring part. Monitoring is also very, very important. How to monitor the logs of our application by using EFK stack. How to monitor our clusters by using Grafana and Prometheus. We are going to set up one project by using monitoring. So these are the five projects that we are going to implement as part of our course. Once all the syllabus is completed, Linux, scripting, AWS, DevOps tools, 
once all the four modules got completed, then we are going to work on projects module, which will give you the confidence in order to attend the interviews. This project module is very, very important. You got the clarity? So what we are going to learn in the projects here is. So if you are clear, I need your response. A project with the Terraform tool, a project with the Ansible, a project with the Jenkins and Docker, a project with the Docker and Kubernetes plus Jenkins, one project with only monitoring part, we are going to learn. Okay. So let me show you as part of these projects also, what we are going to do, how our project pipelines will be available, what kind of projects we have done in our previous batches also. Let me open the pipelines that we have done. The pipeline process, what we have done for previous DevOps batches. I'm opening that. Let me show you that as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sharing my screen here, guys. So can you see this one? What kind of pipelines that we are going to build? I'm going to show you now. Is it visible? So this is very basic pipeline that I'm showing you here. Developers will push the code to the GitHub repositories. Jenkins will be available, which will take the code from the GitHub, which will build the code by using Maven and will deploy the code into Tomcat. This is very basic pipeline. Jenkins pipeline to build and deploy our application. Once it is done, then the second Jenkins job that we are going to build like this, the developers will push the code to the GitHub repository. Then the Jenkins will be available. Jenkins will clone the code from the GitHub repository. Then Jenkins will communicate with the Maven build tool to build our project. Then Jenkins will communicate with the SonarCube to perform the code review. Jenkins will communicate with the Nexus repository to upload that code. Then Jenkins will communicate with the Tomcat to deploy that. This is one DevOps project. So in which we are automating the build and deployment process. So this project we have developed without using Docker and Kubernetes. If you see in this pipeline, the Docker and Kubernetes is not included. So here GitHub, Maven, Sonar, Nexus, Tomcat, Jenkins tools are integrated. We will do one project like this. Then next one, the developers will be pushing the code to the GitHub. Jenkins will clone the code from the GitHub. Jenkins will communicate with the Maven to build. Then Jenkins will communicate with the Docker to build the Docker image. Then the Docker image we are going to deploy by using Kubernetes cluster. So like this, we are going to do one project. Okay. Then after here, GitHub, Jenkins, Maven, SonarCube, Nexus, Docker, Kubernetes will be available. So in one project without Docker and Kubernetes, in one project with Docker and Kubernetes, we are going to set up our DevOps pipelines like this by using all the tools that we learned. GitHub, Maven, Jenkins, Sonar, Nexus, Docker, and Kubernetes will be available. So this is one project that we will set up. And one more project, so we are going to integrate Ansible also in our DevOps pipeline. GitHub repository, Jenkins will take the code from that GitHub, will communicate with Maven for the build process. Then Jenkins will communicate with the Ansible to run the playbooks. Then playbook will be executing for performing the remaining operations, building the Docker image, pushing the Docker image to the Docker hub, then deploy the Docker image in the Kubernetes cluster. Once the application is deployed in the Kubernetes cluster, then we need to monitor our application by using Grafana and Prometheus. There is one project on the monitoring part only, guys. Servers and clusters monitoring by using Grafana and Prometheus and application logs monitoring by using EFK stack that we are going to do, Elasticsearch, LAP, FluentD, and Kibana. Those tools we are going to use only to monitor logs of our application. So if th this is how we are going to set up the DevOps projects. This is project setup. Tomorrow when you go for the interview also, they will ask you, can you explain your project? What are the tools that you have used in your project? Can you tell me how you have created the infrastructure required for your project? How do you monitor your application? Okay. How do you monitor your cluster? What are the challenges you have faced in the infrastructure creation? What are the challenges you have faced in the build and deployment process? 
how do you integrate ansible in the pipeline how do you integrate kubernetes in the devops pipeline these kind of questions they are going to ask so all these things we are going to learn practically as part of our syllabus is this clear for everyone is this clear for everyone what we are going to learn here then next so i hope you got the clarity on the modules that we are going to implement fifth module is related to projects implementation where you will get the full clarity on the topics that we have learned got it then the last module in our course that is interview guide so we are going to conduct the sessions separately for resume preparation so if some people who are having some gap in their career now they want to try the jobs in it as a devops engineer for them how to cover that career gap and how to prepare the resume with some experience okay and we are going to provide faqs also frequently asked for interview questions for the devops engineer because from the previous batches couple of people are attending the interviews and they are sharing the interview questions as well with our team so we have collected all those interview questions and we will be sharing those questions as well okay and we will be conducting the mock interviews for the people who are really interested to participate in the interview so if you see in our youtube channel also we have uploaded some mock interviews on the devops so we are going to collect the information from this batch who are interested to attend that mock interview those things we are going to conduct as per the plan then after this after this we are going to you the job assistant job assistants in the sense in order to attend the interview to get the job whatever the knowledge that is required whatever the information that is required projects resume preparation okay and uh, day to day activities of the devops engineers in the company we are going to explain all that information how to apply for the jobs in the job portals like nowkri monster and linkedin so that assistance that we are going to provide in order to crack the interviews so this is about our course so i hope you got the clarity on the road map what we are going to learn as part of this devops with aws is this clear for everyone are you clear with the information so this is devops with aws master program from zero to hero course so no prerequisites in order to attend this training and myself ashok i will be the trainer for all these six modules in our course there are no prerequisites in order to attend our devops with aws training and the course is divided into six modules guys so the first module is related to introduction to the devops the second module is linux operating system the third module is aws cloud the fourth module related to devops tools fifth module related to the projects setup the sixth module is related to interview guide okay and today is our first session for devops with aws i hope i have given the required information for this course now let's talk about let's talk about the remaining details of our course what are the prerequisites and course content we had discussed right then so what is the duration of this course the course duration guys it is going to take 3 to 4 months of time so exactly i can't give you the timeline exactly 3 months right so buffer i am going to take 3 and 1/2 months of time plus or minus 10 15 days will be available 3 to 4 months of time so minimum 3 months maximum 4 months of time it is going to take to complete this training okay the duration for this devops with aws course right as i mentioned devops with aws duration 3 to 4 months of time it is going to take the course code is it is 18 devops okay so this is our 18th batch for devops with aws cloud and the duration is 3 to 4 months of time for this course trainer will be myself my name is ashok so i am having to tell 11 plus years of experience in the it industry okay and the class trainings 
the class timings daily class will be available from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. IST. It is not going to change. Okay. So one and a half hour time will be available. In this one and a half hour, one hour, 15 minutes, the class will happen. The last 15 minutes, doubts discussion will be available. So every day you can interact with me at the end of the session for any doubts. Okay. And class mode, it is online class guys. Zoom classes will be available. So Zoom link will be available to attend the classes on daily basis. Okay. And the classes will happen. The classes will happen from Monday to Saturday. From Monday to Saturday, the classes will happen weekly. Six days, the classes will happen. Monday to Saturday, the classes will be available. Sometimes, if required, if required, if our course is delaying, okay, if syllabus is not completing uh, as expected, as per the plan, then sometimes we will take the class on Sunday also. But initially, Sunday sessions will not be available. Sunday is a holiday. Monday to Saturday, classes will happen. Okay. And topic wise, topic wise, soft copy notes will be provided. Soft copy notes will be provided. So for every topic, the notes will be available. Let me show you the materials that we have already prepared. Okay. So now for the DevOps, we have already prepared the materials here. So for every tool, for every topic in the AWS, the materials are already available. So DevOps documents are available here. Okay. So if you see my folder, DevOps is available. In the DevOps, the notes pieces are already prepared. DevOps introduction, Maven, GitHub, Tomcat, Sonar, Nexus, Jenkins, Ansible, Terraform, Docker, Kubernetes. Okay. Helm chart, projects setup, everything. If you open the Docker notes, the all the information related to the tool that we are going to learn is already prepared. And this is the soft copy notes we are going to provide for every tool. So when the class is going on, so how to set up the software, so how to install the software, everything is already documented. Okay. So this is the Docker notes. So similarly, if we go for the Ansible notes, for the Ansible tutorial, already the content is available. Okay. How to work with the Ansible. Then similarly, if you go for any tool like a Kubernetes. So Kubernetes notes is also available. What is Kubernetes? What are the benefits with the Kubernetes? How, what is the Kubernetes architecture? Okay. So the complete document is already available. So it is very well organized course, guys. So we are going to share these documents for every tool. If you go for Jenkins also. So for Jenkins also, the notes is available here. Jenkins notes is available. What is Jenkins? What is the CICD? All this information is already documented. Whatever we are going to learn, this already documented. We are going to share these documents with you. So soft copy material will be provided. The documents are already available. Sir, how to work with the tools setup and all? For the tools setup also, I have prepared the documents, everything that is required to set up the tools. In my GitHub repository, DevOps documents available. In the DevOps documents in my GitHub repository, how to set up all the tools. Tool-wise, I have prepared one uh, Git repository. How to set up Jenkins server in the Linux machine. So this is a public GitHub repository. You can check it now also. What are the steps that we need to follow in order to set up the Jenkins in the Linux machine? Step-by-step step, with the detailed documentation, I have created my GitHub repository. Okay, so these two these uh, documents are useful for the people when they are new to the DevOps, when they want to set up the tools by using DevOps. How to set up the Docker in the Linux machine? For this also, one document is prepared. So for every tool, so from the scratch, we are going to learn everything. As I told you, it is a zero to hero course. So everything is already documented. It well planned, well organized course that you are going to learn here. And for Kubernetes also, how to set up the Kubernetes cluster by using AWS EKS service that is also mentioned here. How to set up the EKS cluster, how to set up Sonar, how to set up Nexus, how to set up ELK, projects setup, Jenkins Docker, Kubernetes integration, Ansible setup, all the things are available. If any changes are required, 
in the setup, then I will be updating these documents. I will share this GitHub repository as well with you. Topic-wise, soft copy material will be provided for tools setup, for, in for installing the required softwares to learn this course. Everything is documented. In the class also, I'm going to show you everything from the scratch. Suppose if we want to work with the Maven, how do we set up the Maven and how we are going to use Maven to perform the build operations? Suppose we are going to start the Jenkins. I will show you how to install the Jenkins and how to work with the Jenkins. Okay. So here, uh, all the tools that we are going to learn are open source, except one tool that is called EKS. EKS Kubernetes cluster. It is a paid service in the AWS, guys. So when we are learning the Kubernetes cluster, 1000 rupees to 2000 rupees bill will be generated in the AWS cloud. But you no need to worry. In the AWS cloud, we can request the support team to make our bill amount as zero. If you use any paid service in the AWS cloud, then bill will be generated. We can request AWS team to make our bill amount as zero as a student. I have recorded one video also, how to interact with the AWS support team in the chat box to make our bill amount as zero. I will share that video as well. So you don't need to worry about the paid services in the AWS cloud. We can use them. If the bill is generated, we can request AWS support team to make our bill amount as zero. I will show you how to do that as well. Okay. And every day, every day recorded video, the backup video will be provided. Every day class video will be provided for revision. Okay. Some people are working. Sometimes they are not able to attend the session or due to some work, you are not able to attend the session on live. Every day class will be live. And sometimes if you miss the live session or if you want to re-attend the same session again, then we are going to provide the backup video also with the one year access. And remember, you cannot download that video, guys. The videos you can only watch. One year access will be available for the backup videos. Every day class video will be provided for the revision with one year access. And WhatsApp group will be created for doubts clarification. WhatsApp group will be created for a discussion also. During the session, at the end, you can ask the questions if you have anything. Once the class is completed, when you are doing the practice, if you stuck with some problem, then our WhatsApp paid group will be available. The people who join for this course, all those people will be added to one WhatsApp group. I will also be part of that WhatsApp group. So if you have any questions during the practice in the nighttime or during your daytime, then you can communicate with your batch people in that WhatsApp group. That WhatsApp group we are using for doubts clarification, guys. So I hope you got the clarity. Duration, three to four months of time. The trainer, myself, Ashok, the class timings, 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. IST. The timings are not going to change. Class mode will be online till end of the course. The classes will happen from Monday to Saturday. Topic-wise, soft copy material will be provided. Every day class video will be provided for the revision. The video access will be one year. Okay. Video guys, within 24 hours, next day morning, we are going to upload. 9.30 means already admins will leave the office. So next day. So today if class is completed, next day by afternoon, within the 24 hours is the maximum time that we are going to take to upload the video because administrators are going to upload those backup videos for you. And WhatsApp group will be available for any discussion okay good the course fees here the course fees we are charging 18000 rupees for this complete course for this complete master program we are charging 18000 rupees including linux devops and aws so all these whatever the six modules are available that we have discussed in the roadmap for all these six modules we are charging 18,000 rupees. Okay. So there are no EMI facility also guys. So it is one time payment 18,000 for DevOps with AWS cloud. So you can attend the live sessions. You are going to get the soft copy material and you will be getting the backup videos also for revision and one WhatsApp group will be available for the discussion. This complete course fees is 18,000. If anyone not able to continue the course in the middle, if you feel that 
you need some break for the course, then you can send a mail to the admin team to take a break from this batch and then you can continue in the next batch. Okay, so if you take the break, that means you will be removed from this current batch and you will be added to the next batch that I'm going to start. Good, so when you are going to take break and rejoin the next batch, no need to do the any payment for that one. So that break facility also we are providing because some working people will be available. Those people, due to some, some time constraints and work pressure, they may not be able to complete the course as expected then. Those people take the break and can attend the next batch. And someone is asking, are we going to cover AWS certification as part of this? Maya, uh, AWS certification concept will not be available in this course because for AWS certification, separate course is available. This course is mainly of focusing on the DevOps part, okay? So we are going to focus mainly on the DevOps part to become a DevOps engineer, how much knowledge is required in the AWS that we are going to learn. This program is not focusing on the certification. For the certification on the AWS, separate batch is available. AWS Cloud Solution Architect Certification, it's a separate course. In this course, in these three to four months of training, our main focus will be on the DevOps guys, not on the AWS. So AWS, we are going to learn that is required for the DevOps engineer, not complete AWS. Okay. If you want to attend the AWS certification, that is a separate course where we will focus only on the AWS cloud. You got my point? Dockers and Kubernetes is included in this batch. You no need to attend separately. If you are joining for this master program on the DevOps with AWS, Dockers, Kubernetes also will be covered. Okay, and some people who are not attending the DevOps with AWS who want to learn only Docker and Kubernetes, they can join for only Docker and Kubernetes. Okay, if you are joining for this DevOps, Docker and Kubernetes is already included in this time. You got my point, right? Are you guys clear with the course information, course name, duration, trainer, timings, mode of the classes, okay? And weekly, how many days classes will happen? Daily, how much time the class is going to happen? How do we get the notes? How do we get the backup videos? What is the fee structure for this course? I hope I'm good in clearing all your doubts. Yeah, good guys. So thank you for this one. Today is our first session completed. Guys, you guys can attend five classes for free of cost. So today, Monday, till this weekend, you can attend the classes for free with the same Zoom link. So once the five classes are completed, then if you're interested, then you can enroll for this batch. Okay, five free classes I'm offering. So it doesn't mean that five demos will be available. Only today is the demo session. Today video is available in the YouTube also. From tomorrow onwards, we are going to start with, from tomorrow onwards, we are going to start with actual topic. So tomorrow we are going to start with the module one that is introduction to the DevOps. So you guys can attend five classes for free of cost. The first module you can attend for free of cost. Once you attend five classes, then you can take a decision whether to continue with this batch or not. If you like my explanation, if you like my content, after five classes, you can take a decision whether to join for this batch or not. So you can attend five classes for free with the same Zoom link. So for these five days, everyday class notes, everyday backup video, I'm going to share in the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group link I have given in the chat box. So all of you, please join in that WhatsApp group. Okay, so that you will not miss any updates from me regarding this batch. Who was able to join in the WhatsApp group? Could you please confirm in the chat box?
If anyone not joined, please join in that WhatsApp group, guys. So with this, I'm done for today. Now it's time for doubts clarifications, guys. The people who are having the doubts in the Zoom, there is a raise hand option. So if you click on that raise hand, then I will give you unmute option to ask your questions. Okay. The people who are watching from YouTube, thanks guys. Please subscribe to our channel for more updates. Tomorrow you can attend the live session in the Zoom. Zoom link is available in our